All right, let's talk about this. We'll bring in Greg Jarrett, Fox News legal analyst. I booked him just a few moments ago. I didn't even know I booked him. Just dialed him up on his cell phone. Terrific stuff. And the author of his latest book is The Constitution of the United States and other patriotic documents. And if that weren't enough, Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary, chairman of O'Leary Ventures, Shark Tank investor, and author of Cold Hard Truth on Business, Money, and Life. Kevin, I want to start with you. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been, ever been in a pickle like this with this mob justice, as Jonathan Turley calls it. But if you were Mr. Trump, what would you do? How would you proceed right now? What are you thinking? Well, I think this case is not about Trump anymore, although he is in a pickle, as you suggest. But I think this is an assault on the American brand, mm -hmm. when you think about it. The, no, the reason we're the number one economy on Earth is that we're able to attract capital from all around the world that knows that we have a system, a court system, that protects property rights, and there's an appeal system in place. And so when you get into a situation like this, everybody makes the assumption that there will be an appeal here, but it seems because of the size of this penalty against this infraction, whether they don't match up, it doesn't make sense, that he can't get an appeal. And I think what everybody's asking for in the financial services industry, not just domestically, is when are the adults coming into this oh, situation? Yes, right. when, when is there going to be someone who says, okay, this is not good for the American brand. This is not good for the brand of New York. This case goes well past Trump's presidency if he's elected or this attorney general's mandate. We're making case law that is, 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 I don't have a better word other than to say it's un-American. Mob justice. John Sterling well, called it mob but, justice. But don't you think... Here in New York, it's a democratic mob, Kevin. I, I know you don't want to I do know, I, partisan I, I understand politics, it's partisan what, to you, Larry. But, but that's what you're saying. That democratic mob is wrecking the American brand. It's wrecking the New York brand. Who the heck's going to come in here and do business anymore? What bank? What business? What entrepreneur? Where, would a Kevin Leary come into New York again? No, no, I wouldn't this? bring capital here right now. I'm waiting like everybody else to, for the adults to come in and settle this issue. But I want you to understand, Larry, that where I come from as an investor, a global investor, this is not a partisan issue. This is a bipartisan issue. This is an assault on what America means to investors all around the world, and they're watching. Mm. And we should care, regardless of what party you're from. Mm. What's going on here? No, this, I agree. this is unprecedented. It's, it, it needs an adult to get in the room with the kids that have gone crazy and say, we've got to let this process go through appeal, whatever the fine is going to be. They won't let them. Well, but, but that's not American. I know. That's and, just and so that, that is what bothers me so about So let it. me go to Greg Jarrett about that. Greg, as we were talking on the cell phones just a few moments ago, literally, uh, I asked you about the Eighth Amendment. The, Mr. Trump is this crazy judge, Engeron, said you can't appeal unless you pony up the 460 million some odd dollars. OK, um, can he make can he make an end around Greg Jarrett and appeal to the federal level because the Eighth Amendment violation is essentially a federal constitutional violation? Can that be done, Greg Jarrett? Oh, it absolutely can be done. I think it should be done because the judgment against Trump, Larry, is obscene. It's a violation of the Eighth Amendment's prohibition on excessive fines imposed by the government. And here, the draconian fine bears no reasonable relation to the nature of the offense or the harm, which is what the law requires. In fact, at trial, there was no harm shown. Not a single dollar was lost by anybody. Indeed, the banks that loaned Trump money made enormous profits off of this. And the judge ruled also that, well, Trump, you committed fraud. He ignored the fact that all the bank executives took the witness stand and said, we were never defrauded. So what's happening here is this is the government in Goron and Letitia James, the attorney general, taking someone's business and property and then saying, but you can uh, litigate your appeal later on. My goodness, that's like saying, let's have the hanging now and we'll have the trial later. Mm. Let me just read once again the Eighth Amendment. 
uh, excessive bail shall not be required, nor uh, excessive fines uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, improved, nor cruel and um, cruel and unfair punishment. Uh, can be accomplished. There is up, up on the full screen again. Uh, my eyes are not so good reading off my own paper. But Kevin O'Leary, I think um, this is where it's going to go. Now, I was wondering if he can't get to the Supreme Court, will you loan him the 460 million? <laughs> you know, just to help, in order to protect America's name. The, think of get, it that to way. To get the bond, <laughs> he, he was able to get the 90 plus million from Chubb. Yeah. Um, it's, I don't know of a bond more than 90 million. I, I don't recall not, one. Yeah, you and so you it. need cash to back up the bond insurance. And so now we're talking about the, the, the terminology of seizing assets. Th that actually, that's foreign language to an American right. investor. Right. They want due process. Right. They want the appeal. It, that sounds like Venezuela. It sounds like Cuba. Mm -hmm. It's a really bad look for New York. But I think it's gone beyond New York now. Bipartisan participants and financial services managers are not okay with this. Right. And very, getting very uncomfortable. And I think whether it's the Supreme Court that provides the adult supervision, whether it's somebody else, we desperately need for this kid's party for the adults to get home. Yeah. We need them to come home now. Some, some, some um, appellate court, New York has a higher court, appellate court, should step up. A judge should step up and say, stop. You know, they had ruled against this in the first place, and the statute of limitations ran out on this in the first place. This whole trial is like a mulligan. It's like well, a redo I, I brought think... upon by this uh, radical left Democratic Letitia James. I mean, I'm waiting for, as you say, an adult would be in New York from the Court of Appeals. Greg, isn't that right? I mean, the, a judge from the appeals court, which is a higher court, which has a very good reputation. They're not political uh, party clubhouse hacks. I mean, we're waiting for somebody, uh, as Kevin says, to step in and act like an adult and basically save New York from itself. Yeah, most judges, including appellate judges in New York, are uh, liberals. So while it's possible that one of them will come to their senses and issue a stay here, I wouldn't count on it, which is why I would make the move to go to federal court. Yeah. You know, uh, more than 250 years ago, this is what the British were doing to the colonists. They were imposing exorbitant fines and putting people out of business, mm. which is why the framers, when they crafted the Bill of Rights, made sure the Eighth Amendment prohibition against excessive fines was in there. And so Donald Trump, the moment the fine was imposed, it's so outrageous. His Eighth Amendment was being violated. And when corrupt government officials and biased judges misuse and abuse the law in violation of the Eighth Amendment, their victimized targets, Larry, can sue by filing a civil rights case against the government. And here they can move immediately for an expedited review based on a Bill of Rights, mm -hmm. Eighth Amendment violation by this judge and the attorney general. Absolutely. Bill of Rights, Magna Carta, 1215 A.D. Um, Kevin O'Leary, I want to ask you one more thing before we go. Uh, you're going to buy TikTok. Yeah. All right. Now, my friend Stephen Mnuchin also yep. wants to buy TikTok. Yep. It's been valued. I've seen numbers, $100 billion. Who knows what it's worth? What do you think it's worth? Are you working on a syndicate to buy TikTok? Yes, I am. So is he, and there's others doing the same thing. Uh, I'd argue uh, this is going to be a competition, but it's not worth $100 billion because the Chinese are unlikely to sell the algorithm that gives you the data. I mean, here's the stacks of value, Larry. Very simple. You've got the brand TikTok, a great brand. Great. You've got 170 million eyeballs. You've got 5 million businesses, those are my Shark Tank guys, in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. 85% of the people on TikTok know who I am. I think you need a steward to tell them a simple message. I'll guarantee you that if I buy this asset, the day I switch over, I will turn TikTok China into TikTok USA. Yeah, 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 I'll yeah. bring in an American team. I'll shut down these Chinese back doors. I have TikTok on a burner phone. Wait, wait, wait. shutting down the back doors, that's the algorithm issue. Yeah, so, I, so what it, I think is going to happen. Will Dan sell it, and will get, can you take over the algorithm? Yeah, they're going to sell it, just the names in a database sitting on Oracle servers, maybe in Texas. we, we got to find out where these servers are. The brand, mm -hmm. they're not going to sell the algorithms. And so what's that worth? 
I'd start debating at 30 billion. Mm -hmm. It's a fire sale if you don't get the algorithms because you have no history of these people's purchase behavior. Mm -hmm. Will they it's, sell the algorithms? I don't think so. I would like them to do that. Yep. I'm going to take a different tact. I'll bring a great team to rewrite those algorithms, mm -hmm. but I need it reflected in the value. Mm -hmm. But also the transition. Look what happened on TikTok, or look what happened on Twitter. Started a $44 billion debt and equity deal. Mm -hmm. It's now worth 12 to 16. Mm -hmm. When you mess with the algorithms, you can lose a lot of growth. Mm -hmm. You can lose a lot of people, and that happened in the case of Twitter. It stopped growing. I can't have that happen on my watch. So I'll bring a great team. Look. look it's, it's not just about being a great banker. I'm not trying to say Steve's not a good guy. Mm -hmm. It's a competition. Mm -hmm. Who's the best steward? Who can bring the best team? Who's got an answer? But I actually think this deal is going to require cooperation with the White House, who's ever in it. Mm -hmm. And so I've taken a little initiative, and I've started calling. I don't know who's going to win. Mm -hmm. I'm very fortunate. I talked to Trump yesterday just about TikTok. Mm -hmm. I asked him. I want support on this deal. He's in favor of the sale, isn't he? Not, listen, he doesn't know what the Senate's going to do. Nobody knows what the Senate's going to do. But he'd, li he'd like ByteDance to sell TikTok. He would because he's already gone. It's not from me. He's but, already said that. But I, I'll do the same thing with Biden's team. I need both of these White Houses pretend. I don't, I'm, I'm, not, I'm bipartisan on this. I don't know who's going to win. I get 50 50. It. I get it. I just want to know, will you work with me if I bring the capital and I bring the management mm -hmm. and I guarantee you the national security issue is gone? I'll guarantee you that. And I'll make that part of the deal. You're going to need the White House on board, Larry, who's ever in it. I Might agree. as well start talking to both of them. Um, I agree. I'll provide you all the assistance I can. Well, I appreciate that, Larry. You're you on should right. get on board. By the way, I would say, you know, uh, Biden endorsed the House bill. Right. Which includes the sale in 60 days. Uh, I support Biden for supporting the House bill. No, I the get Senate it. But bill may all change buying it. groups and there are m multiple ones can't do anything till this gets through the Senate. Yeah. And as you know, Schumer's not moving this forward right now. Well, maybe might. they don't want to do it before the election. Well, ask Senator Kennedy's coming up to move forward. Good guy to ask. I'm glad. Now, you're not going to spot uh, Trump to 460 million. That's just, not going to happen. Just for the record. But. I actually I think because the other thing is am, 100 billion. <laughs> I am completely I, I don't think this issue I is really partisan at all. I think it, this is bothering every American which taxpayer, is, everyone, wh uh, which the the, the Trump. I'm talking Well, Trump. everybody knows TikTok's well, leaking data. Yeah, I have a burner phone with TikTok on it. I use it, but I wouldn't. The assault on Trump is completely partisan. TikTok's a different story. I know, altogether. but American people are concerned about the situation in New York. I, I guarantee I agree. you that. I think they're also concerned about this lawfare. This is unfair. You know what President Trump has said to me and others? It could happen to you. Could be your businesses, Kevin O'Leary. It could be your assets, Larry. And it could that's be your That's not cash. lost on me right. or anybody else. I'm just saying. But that's my the kids live in this here. great state, and I want them to live All in a right. wonderful city yeah, that too. doesn't have this madness going on. Well, I agree with that. Uh, Greg Jarrett, I'm sorry we lost you on the TikTok thing. I assume you're not going to bid for TikTok, but if you are, Kevin O'Leary is a very open-minded guy. Greg, you're terrific to help us on the Eighth Amendment because I think that's going to be really important. By the way, Trump is posting the Eighth Amendment stuff on his website right now. Kevin O'Leary, the best of the best. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it.